In this week's video, we are going to talk about how to learn the Talmud. If you are a new convert or Baal Teshuvah or someone that don't really know a lot about Judaism, you are pretty fresh on your journey. It states clearly that you should then not learn the Talmud, but rather you should focus on the Torah, Nevi'im and Ketuvim, commonly known as the Tanakh. Once you have finished the Tanakh with its commentary and you feel, I know it pretty well by now, then you should start learning practical halacha. Now I've addressed this in some of my other videos, uh, but some of the books that you could use to learn practical halacha is the Kitsur Shulchan Aruch or Pinina Halacha. There is many books out there where you can learn how to live your life as an observant Orthodox Jew. And it is clear from the Talmud that you should start with the Tanakh and basic halachot. Now, once you've already done that, you think, you know, I know the Tanakh pretty well. I got the basic halachot down. Baruch Hashem in Judaism, there is always what to learn, more to learn. But you feel you're at a good level with the Tanakh and basic halachot. Then the next step is learning the Talmud. Now, where does the Talmud actually come from? There is several verses in the Torah where it talks about the oral law. And I will quote the verse for you below in full for your reading pleasure. But basically, at Mount Sinai, the written law was given, which we all know as the Torah. But the oral law was also given side by side. What was basically given was Mishnayot. Now the Talmud is structured in a certain way. It consists of Mishnayot, which is in Hebrew. The, the Gemara is in Aramaic, but still using um, the letters of the Alphabet in Hebrew. Then there is Rashi. Rashi is by far one of the greatest commentaries on the Torah as well as the Talmud. And you can find the Rashi on the side. This is in Rashi script. You also have Tosafot on the other side. Now Tosafot is the grandsons of Rashi. Rashi didn't have any boys. He only had girls. So these girls married rabbis. Some of these rabbis are mentioned in Tosafot. And also, one of Rashi's most famous grandsons is the Rabbeinu Tam. The Rabbeinu Tam, strangely enough, often attacks his grandfather Rashi in Tosafot. And that is also where the whole Tefillin debate comes from, where you will see some uh, Chabatniks and um, some um, Hasidim wearing another pair of Tefillin on the head which is called Rabbeinu Tam, after Rashi's grandson. So that is the basic structure of the Talmud, or of a page, a daf of Talmud. Now, a daf a day, or daf yomi, um, which many of you might know, where Orthodox Jews uh, study one daf a day, if you would were to study one daf of Talmud a day, you will finish the entire Talmud in seven and a half years. And normally they have a massive siyum, which they recently had, Baruch Hashem, what a Kiddush Hashem, um, that was a whole stadium filled with Jews that have finished the entire Chas. When you finish the entire Talmud, the entire Talmud is called the Chas. Now the Talmud has many different sections dealing with different aspects of life, from birth to death. 
That is what the Talmud covers. The whole life of an Orthodox Jew. Nothing is left out. What is meant by Daf Yomi is it is the front of the page and the back of the page. One section of the page, so the front of the page is called Amut. So the front, Aleph, the back, Bet. That's the basics of the Talmud. So now that you feel you're ready to learn the Talmud, let's go into some practical steps of how to learn the Talmud. If your Hebrew level, and now remember also your Aramaic, is very good, then obviously you should go for a Hebrew Talmud. So in Yeshiva you only study in Hebrew. Hebrew and Aramaic with a Rashi script, which is tricky, but it is uh, well worth your while. This is how it normally looks if you buy it from the shop. He has a good illustration of how it looks. So it starts off with the Mishnah. And then I don't know if you can see that clearly. It's a Gimel and a Mem. That means Gemara starting. And then the Gemara goes. And then you obviously have, this is the sides that I was talking about with Rashi and Tosafot. And that is basically one Amut. If you can, you should learn this with a rabbi or with a chavruta. The chavruta system has been around for generations. It is where you and someone else at a similar level in learning than you sits opposite each other and discuss the points. Because the Mishnah gives you the outline of the oral law and then the Gemara, which is several different rabbis from different time periods attacking the Mishnah. So asking, but why this? Why does it say that? Don't we learn from another source? And it brings a pasuk and it says we learn from this source, something else. How can the, how can the Mishnah say such a thing? And then this rabbi brings another pasuk. And so it continues. It's a very long debate. There is different levels, like I mentioned in the Talmud. Um, with the rabbis themselves, with the Tana being the highest, and you'll often see that in the Gemara, where they will bring a Tanaic source, which carries the most weight. There's something that carries more weight than a Tana, which is, uh, it's called a Stam Gemara. A Stam source means it has no author. No one knows who wrote it. Strangely enough, these Stam Gemaras have a, very, a much higher level and is normally the opinion that is followed in the Gemara. Another thing to point out is that you can actually learn no halachot from the Talmud. None at all. The Talmud just gives you the structure of how the halachot came into being. And you have to be at a very high level to get any halachot from the Talmud. And this is normally where the poskim the people that deal with modern day issues like um, lights on Shabbos, electric cars, this is where they get their information from to make uh, a new halacha. So the next book is from Art Scroll, which is obviously very popular for any English speaker. So the way that this looks design wise, so you'll see the same page, we're trying to keep it all similar here. Yeah? So it's got the, the normal duff. All these Talmuds, uh, the English Talmuds, will always have the Hebrew in, otherwise it won't be halachically valid. But on the side, you'll see there's like a bar here. And this bar tells you what will be discussed on the English side. So here's the English side, starting with the Mishnah. And then at the bottom, there is very helpful commentary so notes on this what certain words mean it brings down Rashi it brings down to support so that is the art scroll Talmud the next Talmud that I use is the Quran series so the way the Quran is structured is at the back we have the Duff this is Brachot 
and you'll see it's a very it's exactly the same you can't change this format if you do change this format it's not a likely valid so no one will even try to do that but what makes this slightly different is that the Quran at the back has Niki Dot, which is vowelization, which um, the article obviously does not have, um, and which the Quran has to make it a bit easier. And then in the front of the Quran, it looks like this. So it's a bit different from the article. It's also got the, here's the Mishnah being discussed. And then you have notes here on the side. This is um, this is personality, so it's um, telling you about the rabbis that was mentioned. It's got some uh, background information there. And then here, which I like the best, this is actually giving you a lachot that we do today based on the duff that was discussed. So that's obviously why I prefer the Koran. The next book, which I also study from, is um, a little bit different. It doesn't have the actual duff. So this book is mainly used as a review book for yeshiva students or Orthodox Jews that learn Talmud. Um, because it's a much quicker way to learn the entire Talmud. And this is the Kahati series. Pinchas Kahati, Mishnah. And this is what the Kaati looks like. So it's got the Mishnah here in Hebrew, and then it's got the it's got it translated into English. And then on the next page, it has the discussion, all in English, which is very good. And this is basically bringing down Rashi and all the opinions of the rabbis mentioned in the Gemara. And it gives you a much quicker point-by-point -point structure to learn. Another great resource if you do not have the money for the Talmud to buy any books. You know, we're all living on uh, tough economical times. There is also Safaria, which is a free app where you can learn, you know, the Talmud. Another great way of learning the Talmud which is one that I use the most, is Gemara Markings. It is completely free. It's online. It's in audio. It's given over by a rabbi discussing the Mishnah. He does it in Hebrew, obviously, with a translation in English. Then he does the Gemara in Aramaic and then translates it into English. And then he brings you Rashi and Tosafot. Um, to try to understand the duff that you are learning. Now, obviously, learning the Talmud in audio is never as good as learning it from a book. So that's some very practical tips of how to learn the Talmud. Just to give a quick summary, as I promised in the beginning of this video. So first of all, it is better to first, if you are a new convert or if you are Baal Teshuvah, do not learn the Talmud, learn the Tanakh with commentary. Once you've got that down, learn practical daily halachot so that you know how to live your life as an Orthodox Jew. That's point number two. Then once you've got the Tanakh down and you've got the basic halachot down, then you start learning the Talmud. And if you are starting to learn the Talmud, there are several books, as I've mentioned. You can either get the Hebrew Talmud, which is much cheaper. Um, but then your Hebrew needs to be at a certain level, as well as your uh, Aramaic. And you would need to be able to read and understand Rashi script, as well as Tosafot. Um, so that's tricky for most of us. If you're at that level, that's the cheapest and the best option. If that doesn't work for you, you want to do it in English, then the best would be either the Art Scroll Talmud or the Koran Talmud, and I'll put links below. Um, if you are already learning the Talmud and you want a book just for quick review, then the Kahati series is by far the best. 
and if you have very limited time to actually sit down with a book then there is obviously the electronic sources for when you have some time which you can get on Safari um, which is a free app or through Gamara markings and I'll put links to all of that below I hope you found this video informative we should all please God first finish the Tanakh then basic alakot and then we should go into the Talmud and just delve into the great wisdom of the sages of old we should all continue to learn and to grow to understand Hashem and how he works and how he thinks and uh, we'll never get there but we can at least try um, and in that way draw closer to our Kadosh Baruch Hu and to our final redemption please God Mashiach soon Shabbat Shalom Go! Hashem Elech, Hashem Malach, Hashem Imloch